David Lies. This is RSL Today, and I'm in the studio with my wonderful co-host, the long-haired Mr. Keith Harrison. <laughs> you didn't get it cut. Grown another seven days. Yeah. Anyway. How are you, my friend? Hey, well, thanks, David. Thanks for putting the um, the show together, and I'm pleased to say our guest from last week, where we only just got through the, yeah, the only, basic introductions and set quick. the scene, and, yeah. uh, and, and they're back, uh, back this week. So uh, thank you for that. Welcome to our guests. Yeah. Uh, so, mate, very quickly, you want to uh, yeah, talk the, about the phone number and things yeah, like that? Yeah, RSL is at the Torrens, RSL South Australia is in the Torrens Parade Ground, corner of Victoria Drive and King William Road, great big white building with a huge parade ground in front of it. Our phone number is 8100 7300, email admin at rslsa.org.au, website rslsa.org.au, and very big on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, so anything that's happening... It'll be up there on the Facebook. You can go to the website. That's there for things that have to stay up longer and longer. But that's right, yes. Many will know the Facebook posts, they appear and then they disappear further down the page. So um, so that, that's how it works. So uh, uh, there's that. Let's get straight into our guests. Yes. Peter Bruin, welcome back to the studio. Thank you. And Fred, I've got to pronounce it right. Rishkovsky. Rishkovsky. Yeah. Thank you. Um, welcome, welcome back, Fred. Welcome back, Peter. Um, last week, we we very, very briefly touched uh, on you. We introduced you to our audience. Um, Peter, we're here again because of the book, Suffering, Redemption and Triumph. Uh, as I said last week, I think it's a marvellous read and I thoroughly recommend anyone to go out and get a copy of it because it is brilliant. I love it. Um, and... Fred, one of the you're one of the subjects of Peter's book. He interviewed you. Um, when did he interview you? Do you remember? Roughly not nineteen two thousand and twenty one. Two thousand and twenty one. Yes, yes, yeah. two years ago. Now I, I've I've got to say this. I'm, I've got to ask you, Fred. How old are you? Near mm. ninety six. That's not bad, is no, it? That's very yeah. good. Yes. Now you, we were saying off air before um, you. You were in the German army. You served in, on the on the Russian front um, a little bit in um, the Normandy landings, uh, and you after that you were captured, I believe. You were wounded. No, 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 no you, was that was your, must have been your brother. It was it your brother that was wounded? Anyway, it doesn't matter. You weren't wounded. I thought you. He, he told me you were yeah, wounded. You, you were wounded, but you weren't captured. No, I wasn't oh, captured. Oh, right, okay. I I'm was sure. wounded, and I just got out of Hungary. Through Austria, right back into Austria, right. and uh, uh, I had my my arm in a Stuka here. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, they call it Stuka. Oh, okay, okay. The, like a, it's a, a sling yeah, type thing, yeah, a, 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 wire. Yeah. a frame, a prop. Yeah. A, yeah, my bone was cracked here. Ooh, and gee shoulder. whiz! So, so you ended up you were you were captured, I believe, or did you survive the war? Uh, uh, un, un, unfettered. <laughs> well, I survived the war unfettered. Yes, yeah. yes. I when I went to Vienna, and we got and the Russian front came through at that time in uh, in March April, and uh, I went to Vienna, and in Vienna those soldiers they could walk, they could go to their home station. Right. And my home station was gone. Yes. Now East Prussia. So I, I called Hamburg my home because my sister lived in Hamburg. Right. So from Vienna to Hamburg, it took me nearly two weeks to get to Hamburg there. Walking, driving, whatever. Uh, and that's a distance of about roughly how many Ks? A thousand Ks. Oh. A thousand kilos. A thousand Ks. That's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. No, that's not bad. No. And, and it would have been chaos, absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Yes. yes. And, of yeah. course, the, the fronts that came, the Russian front came from the east and the western came from there, and it was only a little corridor through yeah. to yeah. go to Hamburg. Yeah. Anyhow, I finished up in Hamburg in hospital with my... Um, um, you broken, you broken wing. Yes, yeah. And it was, uh, it was the last week of the war 
that uh, Hamburg surrendered to the British. Right. I knew there was a British connection, yeah. Yes. So what did you do once um, the hostilities had ceased? When the hospital, uh, <laughs> when the hostilities ceased, I, uh, I finished. My arm was, was okay and I went to work. I went to work and had so many different works and they were uh, young people, they were uh, rare at those days. Yeah. So I had plenty of work there and I had many other jobs there until uh, 1947, 1947, I went to a laundry and... Uh, dry cleaning service, yep. the biggest one in Hamburg, right. as customer service. Okay. See. And I stayed there for six years wow. with that same company, customer service. So your journey didn't actually begin until 1952? So to that's, Australia. that's, yeah, to yeah. Australia. 53. Yeah. 53. Yeah. I came yeah. 1953 to Australia. Now, what were the procedures? How well, did that come about? Is that what you were about to no, ask? Oh, yeah, I was, no, I was about to say, your background is is working on the land, isn't it? Yes, it was. I come from the land yeah. and I was working on the land, so I wanted to go back on the land. And when we came to Australia, I had a choice. Most of the young fellows, they went to the railways, as yeah. you most probably know, the railway stories, or yes, single yes, men. Yeah. And in, it was in 1952 when they first allowed married couples to come to Australia. And I was one of those that came in 19... 19- so so you, you, become, you, you were married now? Yes. Right. So married you, you, with one daughter, and, and you, I came to Australia. And there was, they came out with you? Because I know in the book a lot of the, the people had to come out individually and their, their partners and spouses and families came out afterwards. So your wife and child came out with you? Oh, yes. Wow. They came with, with the, that was the first assisted migrants right. that came to Australia. And uh, we came on the ship of Anna Saline. And then, of course, we went to Bonagilla. You know, Bonagilla, that yes. yep, big Still a camp, camp there. there. Yep. That was a new experience. <laughs> <laughs> a new experience in Bonagilla. But then they separated us. I wanted to go to South Australia. And uh, my wife stayed in Bonagilla. And I went to Glenerg Hostel. Yes, yeah, down by the airport, yes. Right. Yeah. It's, it's still there? Cost. It's still there? Yes. In parts, yes? Well, no, the, yes. Some of the, the Nissan huts are yeah. still there. Yes. That it, was it, that little there near the airport. Yes, it's a uh, horse riding centre now. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, I know the one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise that had that's been a hostel. That's where it was. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, when I came from Melbourne to Glenelg, at that time you might read in the books there, it was the... Worst night that Glenelg ever experienced, as far as better was concerned. Oh, not this big storm. Mm. The, oh. big, the biggest storm Glenelg ever It wrecked the jetty. And we didn't know that yeah. because we came there. And we went to, my, my mate and I, we went to the beach from Glenelg. <laughs> Half of uh, yeah. West Beach was in the water. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those shacks, they yep. were all there. Yeah. And, and that's why I had my first job, oh. helping an old bloke there. He was trying to salvage what he could mm. with my mate. And he said, no, 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 no. But when he found out that we wanted to work, and we don't, when he wanted to work, we'd been six weeks on the ship and then he yeah. camped and so on, wanted to do something. Yeah. And then he helped us, you see. Well and done. It's amazing. He let us do the job. We yeah. worked there for, for one week, and his daughter came in with sandwiches <laughs> his daughter came in with sandwiches and all that sort of thing and on the end of the week he gave us two pound each he didn't want <laughs> oh, any money what a man. he didn't want we wanted just, to work just wanted to work uh, now, for, oh, just a, a quick sorry. question sorry the procedure for coming to Australia was it just a matter of forms or did you have to have interviews oh yes yeah oh, okay well, I applied to go to America right come from the east no, America, they had so many forms and things like that. Why I wanted to go to America? Because my grandmother, she went to America in 1890, right. in 1890 to America by herself because my father didn't have a father. Oh, okay. Yeah. And she 
he, my father was brought up by her parents. Right. You know, so there's just this bit of yeah. a... Yeah, everyone's got... You've got an incredible story. Yes. Do you, do you know, one of the interesting things there, most immigrants thought, or many immigrants thought straight after the war, that there would be a final war between the West and the Russians because the Cold War had started. Came pretty close. And so they thought, ah, we'll go to Canada or America because we can get back home when the war's resolved much easier. And they knew very little about Australia compared with Canada. And the big thing we used to get people like Fred, good quality immigrants, our selection progress was much faster than the Yanks and the Canadians. Fred had to fill out all these forms to get into America, and we said, hello, you're welcome, within (laughs) within reason. Yes, we gave them an X-ray. Yes, we checked up on their records, but we were quicker. Isn't that amazing? Uh, What about uh, Fred's life here? Yes, now I I was just about to say, now you've you've been very successful in in your life here, haven't you? I have. Um, I have. What would you like to talk talk about that? Well, my, my... my really start was on the farm. Yeah. The people on the farm, that was the old churches, uh, David, uh, not David, uh, Vic and Mavis, they were very nice people and we've been right through to this day with the family. Yeah. You know, and I stayed there for two years and uh, that's where I uh, grew up. And Got then I wanted to yeah. go to civilization, more so, yeah. Western Flat. You know where Western Flat is? No, of course not, <laughs> because when you go from Border Town to Narrow Court, yes. you drive through, through there the, and there's yes. a little sh- sign, it's Western Flat, that's yes. all. Yes, that's I remember. All. Yeah. So the first farm, the family you were with, where was that? Western Flat. Oh, that was Western Flat. Yeah. Western okay. Flat. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, yes, near Border Town. That area, yeah. And yeah. that's where I done my uh, – and, and worked hard and I made some good money there. Flat land. Yes, <laughs> ten pound a week, but I had a cottage, and I had, you know, on the farm you get meat and everything like that. It's not bad, is it? Ten. It 10 would be like week. like nothing you'd seen before. No. Our, our our land, our nature, nothing. The animals were different. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Tell the listeners about your wife going into the front bar at. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, border town, Tidyara. Yeah. Mandala, Mandala it's the yep. corner, the corner pub there, and my wife is doing a bit of shopping at the farmers' union, and I said I go in the pub and have a beer and bring <laughs> take take it two bottles, two bottles home. Little long necks. Yeah. And next thing, my wife walks in the corner pub, and the pub is full, you know, and talking and ever. All of a sudden, it was silence yeah. there in the pub, and everybody looked. at towards us and we looked around there. It was us that... <laughs> yeah, no, you've got to go to the lounge. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, 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 oh, yes, yes. That was, that was an experience, yes. Yeah. We're now, getting close to the end, we, David. We so, are, uh, I know. Um, yes, I'm, I'm very conscious yeah. of that. You ended up being very high up in... Um, and what was the company? Windsor uh, Chickens. Windsor Chickens, that's right. So you, you did very well. In your in your seventy years, yes. Here. Well, I was share farming in Nichanga, mm-hmm. and my neighbour he was an entrepreneur. Yeah, he had big ideas. Yeah, he wanted to on on his thirty acre farm. He wanted to have a, a holiday resort built. Yeah, and the next thing he was. Yeah. yeah. Look, Fred, I, I, I apologise. We're going to have to leave it there. If you want to hear about Fred's adventure, read the book, Suffering, Redemption and Triumph. And Peter, thank you for coming in. Fred, thank you, thank you very for much for coming, coming in. in. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. afternoon. Good afternoon.